What is going on, fellas? In today's book review, we got Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kathneman. Hopefully I pronounced that right. So this book is all about intuition versus logic. So you know how you use your intuition for some things going based on how you feel and then using logic for others. This book tells you not to go too hard on one side or the other. And, you know, sometimes you got to think fast and you go with your intuition. It's hard to do things slow with your intuition you know like if you're in the middle of a, a basketball game you have that split second decision where you know what you want to do you got to think fast some of the times you got to think slow and then you want to mix it up and use both logic and intuition in certain scenarios so it's all about that and then all the, i guess the case studies on when to use them and the different different systems in your body and it breaks down the different areas of your brain on which is which so let's get straight into the next we got <clears throat> expert intuition strikes us as magical but it is not intuition is nothing more or less than recognition the more aware you are of things the easier it becomes to see it more you can do two easy things at once but it is very hard to do two hard things at the same time let's go with the one above it's like way easier to recognize certain things when you become aware of it those things were always in front of you just think about this it's like think about someone that you like and then everything that they have let's say they drive a certain car let's say they wear a certain clothes they use a certain perfume you start to notice that everywhere if they drive one car and then you think of them you're going to see that car everywhere those things everything's already been here you just weren't aware of that certain thing to see in front of every time just like if you always look for the negative scenario you're always going to see it but if you always look for the good side of something it's always there as well you just haven't seen it um you can do two easy things at once but it's very hard to do two things at the same time I like to do one thing at a time. It's so hard to multitask and you're never going to be efficient in an area. If you're trying to text someone at the same time as reading a book, it's going to be hard. If you try to walk while reading a book, you have to be sitting there and doing one thing at one time. Otherwise, it's going to take you two times the amount of effort and you're not even going to be able to accomplish that in twice the amount of time. It's just not worth it. Intense focusing on a task can make people blind efficient or effectively. Because if I guess if you're focused on one thing, you're, you're not going to be able to see other things around you. But that's good in you know certain scenarios when you're trying to do one thing. Just like they say, ignorance is bliss. If you only focus on you and nothing outside of you, a lot of times there might be this happening on one side of the world, this happening on the other. But at the end of the day, a lot of the things that you don't like are about yourself. That you instead of focusing on anything else in the world, when you only focus on yourself, then you know you'll accomplish and like things that actually matter because it's yourself, the things that you can control, if that makes any sense. We can be blind to the obvious. So a lot of times if you're hypnotized by something or somebody, maybe you're not able to see, I know a lot of people have this relationship problems. They're not able to see the red flags because they're so dumbfounded about all the good things and they ignore all the bad. Um, it is easier to recognize others' mistakes than our own. I feel like a lot of us do this all the time. You see all the things in other people, but you rarely look inside yourself and see all the things that you're not good at or the things you struggle with. And I feel like a lot of times, the things that I don't like about other people are the things I deeply don't like about myself. And all the things I deeply like about other people are all the things that I like the most about myself. Flow, flow state of effortless concentration so deep they lose sense of time of themselves and their problems. So I enjoy getting this flow state, it happens many times. It takes a while to get it and you only focus on one thing where again, nothing else exists because you're not thinking about it anymore. So one thing for me, a bunch of things that get in, in the flow state is, well, I'd say number one of the best ones is playing basketball or a certain sport with friends. You're so lost in the moment of like, you're concentrating so much on the game that nothing else exists and you're having fun while doing it. It's like, you know, like when you're with your friends, time flies by or doing something fun. When you're at school staring at the clock, it's slow as can be. So that one's always very cool because like I don't always look at that every day, but it's something where it's like that flow state. Because you know, a lot of things you want to be in between anxiety and in between being too bored, too easy to where you're bored. That flow state in between where everything is effortless. So you don't have to try anymore. It happens naturally. Using mental energy burns glucose to repair fast. Just eat some fruit. A bat and ball cost $1.10. The hat cost $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? I'll read that one more time. A bat and a ball cost $1.10. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? I feel like a lot of people would say 
if the one costs 10 cents, then the other one would cost a dollar and 10, but that would equal a dollar 20. So the answer to that question is the hat or the bat costs, what do you call it? The ball costs five cents and the bat costs a dollar and five cents adding to one cent. But again, that's a, that's a certain thing where you'll have this, I'm gonna say do this in like a Harvard class, 70, 80% of you people got it wrong because they're like, oh, this is such easy math. My intuition's telling me this one. No, no, you gotta slow down and actually look at it. And I thought that was a very, very cool one. I gotta start calling, just asking random people that and seeing what they have to say. Um, using letters in bold or more believable, are more believable. Also using the color blue. So I love when certain books, a lot of books, you know, they're just like the normal handwriting in the book. But some books, they have stuff in bold. And if every other, I want to say that came out with a study where it's like every other word is in bold. You read it faster and better and you retain it better. And I also, I enjoy reading when the letters are bold. So I can definitely see all that. And also color, just like the room, blue, uh, definitely plays effect on some psychology. Using sentences that rhyme. Repetition over and over again puts you in cognitive ease. When in a good mood, intuition is exceptionally stronger versus when I'm in a bad mood, it does way worse. Yeah, I guess I gotta notice that. You know, you have a bad streak, it just keeps going worse and worse and worse and the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. So whenever I'm in a good mood and everything's good, bro, my intuition is fucking spot on. When we are uncomfortable or unhappy, we lose touch with our intuition. Good mood, better intuition, creativity, gullibility, bad mood, sadness, vigilance, suspicion, and analytical approach. A good mood is a signal things are going well. The environment is safe. It's all right to let one's guard down. Familiarity breeds liking. So, as you know, when you're familiar with someone else or you're familiar because you guys have the same interests, breeds liking. The halo effect. The tendency to like or dislike everything about a person, including the things you have not observed, just based on how they present themselves and how they look. Sequence of events matters. W S or W Y S I A T I. What you see is all there is. So maybe I had a good example in this other book I read where there was two faces. You saw one side, the other people saw one side. One side looked like a 20 year old lady, the other one looked like a 70 year old lady. Depending on what perspective you see things, you both could be looking at one person, one side and one the other. Both people can be right at the same time. There doesn't always have to be a wrong answer because you're seeing things from a different perspective. You might not know what's going on in someone else's life. You know, uh, someone just said this, an example of the kids, and it's the same book as well, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where, you know, your kids could be misbehaving really badly and in public and other people are like, you're going to parent your parent, or you're going to parent your kids. And little do they know their like mom passed away a few days ago and then I'm going to handle it. So it's like, you don't know anyone else's scenario that's currently going on. So depending on how people feel, it's like, or depending on what they do you don't exactly know yourself what they're going through so and when you put that in perspective it's gonna be obvious for a kid to you know not behave if something tragic happened like two days ago and it's the first time ever they're gonna process it so just realizing that anyone can be in that scenario anytime just like you're able to get you're able to grasp more things and realize oh this person might not behave badly all the time or let's say for example they're bullying someone else it's not because they don't like the other person necessarily but it's been going for a rough patch of time and you have more sympathy for someone who you know might not be the most positive person at the moment always here are both sides of the story see things from other person's point of view i say that every single day now and like the, i say a list of like smile and greeting people when talking to them talk with enthusiasm and animation give honest and sincere appreciation see things from the person's point of view uh would be generally interested with in what the other person is saying, be a good listener, just doing those things. But the point of view is huge. You don't really understand all the good things you can, per, or all the good things that you do until you re like really start to look at things from another person's point of view and you can learn a lot about yourself and just see things from, you know, the other side. Because a lot of times we're always biased on our side because we have, we just see it from this one side. But then when you hear the story from the other person's point of view and actually listen to them, you'll interrupt them and you're like, oh, both ways can be right and not wrong at the same time. Framing effects plus sequence are big. 90% fat free versus 10% fat. Always be at your 100% best wherever you are. Your first impressions always matter. 
when you have more information, you make better decisions. So again, when you, I like to do things intuition and logical. That's where you max it out. You know, you feel great about this and then analytically it matches up. That's the perfect play. I don't always like to make plays where it's just intuition, even though if some things have to happen fast or not big decisions, I'll go based off that. I'll just, you know, I do more of intuition than logical because that's just, it, it keeps working out for me a lot of times. And you know, at the end of the day, when you have a good mindset, you're able to see the good and the bad. So let's say, for example, your intuition tells you to do something and then it ends up not working, but you see, you learn something from it. It's like you are winning either way. When doing studies, doing research, using bigger samples, the more info you have, the more accurate the results, because you can see, again, if you have or 10 participants doing something versus 1,000, you're gonna get way more accurate results with 1,000 because more people are doing it. Bias of confidence over doubt. Sustaining doubt is harder work sliding into certainty. We are pattern seekers, believers in a coherent world. We always look for patterns in everything, especially, I guess, numbers, uh, you see patterns in like clothing, on a painting. We are very pattern oriented. The hot hand in basketball is an illusion. So, you know, the people where it's like, as soon as you make one shot, you make the next two, because you know, but the analytically, everyone's average is always the same. You just happen to make more shots in a row because I guess for me, I shoot way better. I shoot lights out when I continuously make my shots. The anchoring effect works insanely well if you give a suggestion that's really high up. People are willing to match on the higher end of the match on the lower end of, due to suggestion. Weigh the pros and cons with things you want to do to see if the trade is worth it. With small risks, we either ignore them altogether or we give them far too much weight, nothing in between. I highly suggest all the smallest things in life, do th don't wait long to make decisions on them just going fast don't worry about it. don't stress over it the big things in life are like you know you have a friend that checks or someone dies in your family or you have a pet that dies or you have to make a big business decision or you're moving houses the big decisions you're going to save the time and energy for all the smaller ones you want to get rid of right away um an example would be like a worried parent waiting for their teenage daughter to come home late from a party there's probably nothing to worry about but you can't help but imagine the disasters that come to mind. Even in a terrorist attack when comparing to traffic accident deaths, traffic accidents are significantly higher. So even though you might be scared of the other thing, the other one's way more likely. That's like swimming in the ocean. Your odds are better dying to a vending machine falling on you than a shark biting you. Um, people that frown lose confidence and intuition. People that smile, it's definitely the opposite. I feel way better when I smile. Less is more. People keep saying that to me. Adding a cheap gift to an expensive product brings down the value. Rewards for improving performance work better than punishing for mistakes. The more success, the more regression, everything usually has a mean and average. So one day you do really well, odds are next time you won't do as good without any external voice. Everything is easy to read in hindsight, but taking action and knowledge before it happens is key. That's the one I just kind of grinds my ears with being Everything in hindsight is just so easy to see. But then like during the fact, it's not always, or I feel like for me, I'm way better at it now, but um, what do you call it? It's just hard to always look back and then regret things that decisions that you made. Get the book Halo Effect. Guess I gotta read that next. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. That was the book Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Other than that, have a good day and